it's garage chemistry time with Miller. That's me. What up, Lions? Today we're going to be doing a calorimetry lab. So we've been learning about uh, thermochemistry and heat of fusion and just general heat uh, calculations. And today what we're going to do is we're going to determine the heat of fusion of ice or how much energy it takes to actually melt ice. And we're doing this because I want to see if drinking ice water actually burns more calories than drinking normal water because water doesn't have many calories in it, but one of them actually may boost your metabolism more than the other. So let's check it out today. What I'm going to do is I have my calorimeter. It's just essentially two um, styrofoam coffee cups. And then I have a, a to close the system, I'm going to put the lid on top and that hole there is for my thermometer to sit in while the system is um, melting the ice. So as the um, energy from around us, I'm not going to heat the solution up because I don't want to put energy into it. I want this reaction to occur naturally. So I'm going to see how much energy this ice is going to take from the outside system and input it into this closed system. And we're going to uh, determine the um, actual heat of fusion, the, Q, the delta HF or the, the Q of the solution by first finding the mass of the water, the um, change in temperature. So we're going to record that initial temperature of the solution before we put the ice in there. And then the final temperature once the ice is all melted. And then um, we're going to find the final mass of that ice and water. And then we're going to do some calculations after that. So let's um, find this mass of water first. Prior to doing that, I'm just going to tear my... Um, my uh, styrofoam cups and lid. So I'm just gonna zero out, tearing means to zero out the balance. So I'm gonna tear that so it's gonna be a zero mass and then I can actually weigh out my 100 milliliters of water. So I have, yeah, it looks like 100 milliliters of water. That should be about 100 grams of water as well. Assuming the density of water is one. I'm getting about 95.07 grams. Now that could just be because of the temperature. It's hot in Sacramento and this is in a garage. It's not pristine tap water. I have it uh, bottled distilled water. So that's why it could be off. Otherwise, that's why we're getting the exact mass because I don't want to assume it's going to be 100 grams. All right, so 95.07 grams of water. Let's get this initial temperature. So I'm going to close my system up and I'm going to put my thermometer in and we're going to see what the temperature is. So already it's dropping right now. This thermometer goes up to 120 degrees. Obviously we're not going to need that. Um, let's see. Should be leveling out at room temperature. So right now I have it at about 70, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to go with Celsius is about 23 degrees Celsius. We're going to go with Celsius here. So initial temperature is going to be 23 degrees C. Then we'll see what our final temperature is. All right. So I'm going to throw my ice in. Now I'm not going to use all the ice here, mainly because I only have 100 milliliters of water. So I technically only really need 100 milliliters of ice. So I'm going to throw in about four ice cubes here. Four should be enough. We need to see what it's going to, when it's going to melt. So let's close my system up. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. When we come back, the ice is going to be melted. And then I'm going to show you what our calculations are going to be. We're essentially using our calorimetry calculation. Mass M is that initial mass we just did. Specific heat of water is that 4.184 joules per degree Celsius. That's why we're not using Fahrenheit. And that delta T is the change in temperature, uh, initial and final temperature. So that's why we got that initial. We'll get that final temperature as well. All right, guys, when we come back, we're going to look at uh, the system. We're going to see that ice is melted. Beautiful lab of watching water melt, watching paint dry, you know, all those fun, fun things. And then we're going to look at some calculations. All right, guys. All right, you guys, we're back. So all the ice is melted. I'm not going to lie. It's probably been about half an hour of me just sitting here. Um, but I have a final temperature. Let's get the final mass of the water because what we need to do is see how much ice is actually melted. We have the initial mass of the water 
We're going to get the mass of the ice melt, and then that'll tell us the exact mass of ice that melted. Total volume minus initial volume is what I melted. Um, from there, let's do some calculations, and we're good to go. So it looks like my final temperature is... About four degrees Celsius, pretty good. So I'm gonna do four degrees Celsius, and let's get this final mass. So I'm gonna take my thermometer out. Let's weigh this thing. Looks like I have 149.53 grams. All right. So using my handy dandy calculator, I get 54.4. Four six grams of ice melt, and I'll show you. I added a little column on my calculation table that mass of ice melt. Um, I realized when I was doing the uh, calculations for the um, percent error and like how much um, was the heat of fusion of ice, I needed that uh, calculation in there. So let's get the actual heat here. Uh, we're gonna get the calculated. Um, heat of fusion. I have the actual heat of fusion of ice. And so we're going to uh, determine what that delta H is. Okay. So first things first, we need to find the heat that was actually the Q that was actually in the uh, water itself. From there, we're going to divide that Q by the mass of the ice that's melted. And that's going to be our delta HF. All right. Let's see. So um, I had... 95.07 grams of water. So I'm gonna write that in on my data table. 95.07 grams. Now my um, specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per grams degree Celsius. I got my grams of water. Now let's get my uh, change in, um, my degree Celsius, my change in temperature. My initial temperature was 23. My final temperature was four. So that's gonna be negative 19. So my Q is going to be a negative number, which should tell us what, um, whether that reaction was exo or endothermic. So let's do our calculation here. Here's what I have for my calculation. Let's find that Q value. That'll give us our joules. And from there, we'll get our joules per grams, which is our delta HF. So I got 95.07 times 4.184 times 19, I get a Q, 7557.7 joules, okay? Negative, that is. Ta-da! Now, it's negative because it was an endothermic reaction. It had to take in heat from the outside to provide um, heat to melt that ice. Otherwise, if it was exothermic, you would feel heat coming off of that styrofoam cup. Didn't happen. Cup's cold to the touch, meaning it's taking in energy. Um, so, how we're going to find the delta HF, let's take that 7557.7 and let's divide by the mass of um, ice. So we're gonna erase a couple things first. Let's divide by 54.46 grams. That's gonna be our delta HF there. And I got a huge error here, but it's to be expected. So I get about 100 and 38.8 joules per gram. That's my heat of fusion of ice, okay? So that's how much energy is needed to melt the ice, all right? So let's look at our percent error here. So the actual is 334. Whew, I have a huge percent error. So mine was 138. And I got this error mainly because I just don't have the proper setup, right? Um, I have styrofoam cups, so I'm not really measuring like a really, it's not like the best way to measure like the heat here. And um, 
in a garage and it's really hot. It's not like ambient temperature, it's elevated temperature. So that could have a lot of effect. So that additional heat added in could be um, changing any number of variables in this uh, system. So we're gonna do that 334. We're gonna subtract our 138.8, divide it by 334, multiply by 100, and I get 50. 8.4% error. That's incredibly high. That is horrible chemistry right there. But then again, I'm in a garage. All right, so here's what we're looking at. A is the actual, C is the calculated. So I had a 58.4% error, which means I had half of the results or even more than half the results that I wanted. Um, again, I was looking for a very, very high heat uh, compared to the amount of um, grams of ice that melted. Now, it could have been because I double-sleeved the um, coffee cup. Maybe if I just did one sleeve, I would have gotten a higher heat. Who knows? Um, there's a lot of things we could have done here. So take that into account. You have some calculations I need you to do. One of them, and the main thing we were looking at for this lab is, do you burn calories when you drink ice water compared to normal room temperature tap water? Calculate that out, and it's going to surprise you, I think. All right, Lions, have a great day. Thank you for that lab. Roar.